that's the only thing that's stopping me from paying you know the few dollars a month it is to get the blaze because I would love to have that option but I don't I get what I can online so uh, and I'd love to see your show on a regular basis I do get to uh, catch it every once in a while when I'm lucky so uh, good news uh, coming from uh, Dana Lash and uh, look forward to seeing her in the near future like I said September 8th so uh, that's kind of what's going on with that for uh, those of you who uh, who go to the site formerly known as the Brenner brief they're still under that URL that Earl um, but they've uh, they're looking to change their name they already have it decided on they just haven't done the change over the graphics yet but it's now owned by the tavern keepers and uh, Curtis Mang who's uh, he's a great writer he writes for several outlets in fact I've uh, approached him and discussed uh, possibly coming over to uh, to Buzzfo as well because he just has that wit you can take anything that's a serious diehard story and make you laugh about it and think about the serious aspects of it all at the same time which is really a, uh, a remarkable talent but uh, Curtis goes through and uh, does his take on the uh, the propaganda I guess the message coming out of the US Border Patrol that they're trying to send to the Central American and South American countries where these illegal alien kids originated and uh, the way they're doing it is by recording songs they're you know doing up their version of schoolhouse rock I guess and uh, and sending the songs down there and one of them actually has become a hit song uh, like a number you know top 10 hit you know like we have America's top 40 well you have you know uh, Honduras's Guatemala's you know El Salvador's top 40 and this song is down there in several of the countries is, uh, is one of the top songs and it's called La Bestia which in uh, English is the beast of course and it's about the uh, the train that's nicknamed the beast that a lot of these kids and their coyotes use to travel through Mexico and up near the border or to the border to do their illegal crossing and they're not just like getting on there like paying a ticket and riding they're running up to it and jumping at their cargo trains they're not passenger trains they're running up and uh, doing the hobo thing and the, the trains move relatively fast it's slow enough evidently for the, the kids to jump on in fact they've even talked about making the trains faster in order to uh, deter the uh, the stowaways but uh, as stated it's just it's not so much how slow the train goes it's the path it takes and the fact that it's not watched very well that enables the uh, the kids and the coyotes to, to jump and stow away on it so they've done this song up to try to uh, send the message that it's dangerous to go riding on a train and thinking it's gonna get you to America because all kinds of nice things happen on the train kids fall down get squished by their wheels they don't make it and end up wandering around in the desert and dehydrate they get beaten up robbed raped murdered you know that all the nice things that you always wish would happen to your kids right and I mean that as sarcastically as possible folks so the Border Patrol did up a song about all the great things that happen on the beast things like that and uh, I've been sending it down south and uh, yeah they're, they're kind of sending a message down there you know along with evidently according to Curtis Mang and of course I think it's tongue-in-cheek is they're coming out with a CD for the United States um, to include uh, songs such as Detroit is just San Salvador with snow they're mowing their own lawns in snow you can't date Miley Cyrus uh, bad school lunches, etc., etc. Give a give a read to to Curtis Mang's article over there at uh, the the site formerly known as Brenner Brief. Then get a good laugh on, and also read more about these songs that the uh, 
the Border Patrol produced as part of their propaganda campaign to stave off or deter the uh, the growing well evidently it's been slowed down uh, but influx of illegal alien children now folks like I said before I don't I wouldn't say that it's necessarily slowed down as much as they think I just think that the uh, kids aren't coming across the border and turning themselves in right away the way they were because they found out they may not get amnesty as they thought they were going to uh, as they were misled you know just turn yourself into the border patrol and they'll get you some free food and free water and then find you a free place to stay and you'll, you won't get kicked out well evidently the word got back that that might not be the case so I'm willing to gamble that they're still coming they're just not turning themselves in. That's just my um, best guess. Well, folks, the last few minutes of the show, we're going to continue talking about the border, but we're not going to talk about the uh, the songs written by the Border Patrol. Instead, we're going to talk about a group of uh, of patriots, if you want to call it that, of people, of activists who uh, from August 1st to August 9th are making their way across Texas. They originated in Murrieta, California. And their goal was, well, Murrieta, for those that uh, need a reminder, that was that first town that really hit the news where they started to bring the uh, these illegal alien children in by buses to kind of house them. And... A group of of uh, of people stood up and said, "No, we don't want them here. We don't want them in our town." And they actually blocked the buses and made and turned the buses away. Well, because that was the 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 first real sight of local citizens saying, "Not in our town." This group um, called the Border Convoy started there in Murrieta, California, and their goal is to uh, be in McAllen, Texas on August 9th and they've had all kinds of interesting things go on along the way um, they've had uh, people attempt to run them off the road they've had people make false claims that when they were going past the convoy that a bunch of members of the convoy were a bunch of uh, in quotes redneck bearded old men with guns uh, that uh, that pointed uh, their rifles at the uh, the people driving by you know they had they've been pulled over by the police who then looked around and said hey this is mostly middle-aged and uh, retired women I don't know where they're getting these big bands of uh, of as it was described young bearded rednecks when it's mostly women in the convoy interesting and we're you know told you look at the demographic now, this is wrong you know, that reports are evidently wrong. And they've even had uh, some so-called news outlets try to uh, debunk things that they that they claimed were going on as they make their trek um, across Texas. Evidently, they were told to stay away from El Paso. They were they got there and were told leave. You're not welcome. And then they had a showdown in a uh, town of Van Horn, Texas, back on Monday. And uh, a bunch of uh, of so-called news outlets, most of which that lean rather left and are very, very pro-open borders and uh, amnesty and letting lawbreakers just go and not be uh, prosecuted for their crimes or punished for their crimes. And people who have no respect for the law or the Constitution or you know, the American way of life. Um, Allegedly, of course, um, kind of painted the uh, the group in a negative light, and even some of the legitimate news outlets, if you want to call them legitimate, we know which way they kind of lean, but they also did some discrediting and fact checking of the the stories that were revolving out there. Um, allegedly, uh, that the story from coming from this uh, border com- Texas border convoy group was they had stopped. Now, this is the original story. That they had stopped uh, for the night at a Comfort Inn, and were surrounded by uh, hordes of uh, 
of uh, Mexican cartel members and you know South American cartel members, FARC related groups, etc., and threatened, etc., and uh, and they reported it, blah blah blah. So a lot of the facts that were kind of rumor going through the rumor mill out there got debunked by these uh, news sites, and they. Uh, turned the uh, the bunking of the rumored facts or the rumored stories um, saying that the whole thing was fabricated by the Texas uh, border convoy but uh, what these uh, people failed to do is a full fact check according to the, the border convoy uh, website over on uh, their Facebook page was that uh, you know, it wasn't fabricated they just got the facts completely wrong and didn't look in the right direction um, there is a 911 call that actually took place and it's actually logged. Uh, Culberson County had no recollection of it, but that's because um, although the, the quality in where they stayed was in Culberson County, they didn't make the call until they got an I-10 and uh, got away from the quality in, not a comfort in, but a quality in. And uh, and then they placed the call when they were safely away and back on I-10. At the point that they got to I-10 and made the call, they were no longer in Culberson County. They were in Reeves County when they placed the call. Um, the uh, There was a sheriff deputy vehicle there but the actual incident was uh, reported and taken care of by uh, by the Texas State Troopers, the Texas State Police. So the county, Culberson County, wasn't involved at all, which you know would go along with the reports coming from these other websites that Culberson County had no uh, no recollection and you know claim you know made the, made it look like the claims were false. Well, that's because they weren't involved. So yeah. And then uh, they met up with another group. Uh, they met up with another group called uh, Operation Secure Borders. It's a militia group. Met with law enforcement um, where I-10 uh, goes through and has its exit in Balmoria, Texas. And a member of law enforcement um, flat out told them that they are, their intelligence says that they are being watched. The border convoy is being watched by uh, cartels and follow, probably followed by cartels. And probably um, they started doing so around with their, uh, their trackers or whatever you want to call them uh, about the time they hit El Paso. So uh, right now the uh, border convoy is trying to get copies of all the official documents and the police reports etc so they can justify their claims so whether or not it was uh, fabricated is definitely a big question mark um, on the flip side today about the time that this show ends the border convoy group will be uh, making a pit stop in San Antonio at 127 Navarro Street those who uh, who heard the, sh heard the show uh, a week or two ago, that uh, that address should sound familiar, because the San Antonio Tea Party, River City Tea Party Patriots, and other Tea Party linked nine eleven or nine twelve, and um, and Patriot groups in and around the San Antonio Bear County area, as well as some people that came from other parts of Texas to join in started the uh, National Day of Protest against amnesty and against this uh, this current border crisis and the way it's being handled. Well, they kicked it off and actually did their protest a day early at that same address, 127 Navarro Street in San Antonio. And why would they kick it off there? That happens to be the Mexican consulate. Now, when you're talking about kids from Central and South America, is protesting in the Mexican consulate really going to do much? You would think at first, maybe not. But these kids are coming through Mexico. So if Mexico did its job and protected its own borders, its southern border, we wouldn't have as many issues with our southern border. 
No, shit. Does that mean we should cooperate? Mm, it'd be a good idea. But, uh, yeah, the uh, they chose the Mexican consulate. Is there a place to, to stop? And then uh, tomorrow, they plan on doing a press conference at the McAllen bus station at around 11 a.m., plus or minus, depending on when they get there. So uh, that's what's going on with that group as they make their trek from California across Texas. And uh, as I said, there's been some interesting things that have come down. And now as we uh, wind down towards the end of the show, I do want to uh, call your attention to some interesting little bits of information that I came across this morning. Once, I, Like I said... I do listen to a local news radio show as part of my show prep. Um, also, I like to know what's going on in my own backyard. And I do that, of course, while I'm looking through other things. So I have multiple things going on. And uh, there's a guy, a gentleman. He's, uh, he's one of the news, uh, news editors and news personalities on the radio show. His name is Michael Maine. And he does a, uh, I think he calls uh, Cyber Stuff or Cyber Watch or something along those lines. I think it's called Cyber Stuff. Uh, kind of Main Street t- technology type uh, bits on the, uh, on the show. And one of the things that he brought up is there's a report, and I'm trying to dig it up to get the exact uh, data on it. But one of the things he said was that 30%. of the bandwidth being used at any time is being used by people surfing pornography sites and that the uh, a single pornography site and he didn't give the name of it but it's evidently like the highest rated or one that gets, gets the highest hits gets more hits per day than all news sites including the Drudge Report combined folks what are you know that reminds me of the Avenue Q song from the the musical Avenue Q and uh, I'm not going to sing it I'm not going to play it but if you folks want to go on uh, over there on YouTube and do a search for Avenue Q and look for the song the internet is the internet song yeah, uh, not safe for work. Make sure your kids aren't around. But sa- kind of a sad commentary on society when the primary one third of the use of uh, of the internet these days when we have streaming Netflix and everything else, and yet one third of the bandwidth is still being used for pornography. Makes you think. So if you want to get a news story out there, go ahead and put a couple of uh, pornography buzzwords into it and tags and uh, watch your hits go through the roof as people search for those particular things and they get your news story instead. Just kind of a hint for those of you who want to uh, wiggy around and uh, jockey around your SEO uh, profiles for your uh, your website and your blogs out there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a great hour. Of course, I'm your host, Paul Gregory Matushak, and uh, I'm wishing you a uh, great uh, Thursday, August 7th, 2014. This has been the Mouth of Matushak Show, and we'll see you back here to end, wrap up the week tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>